Kwajalein High School, learning is anything but ordinary. Here, students have a rare and exciting opportunity to connect with astronauts abroad the International Space Station, an experience that not many kids get to have. For these students, today is a moment that they'll never forget. They've been given a chance to ask astronauts in space any questions that come to mind, from what it's like to live in zero gravity to how space travel impacts the human body. As the astronauts answer each question with curiosity and excitement, the students are filled with awe. For many of them, this is a rare peek into a world that they might one day explore themselves. After the questions are answered, the students split into different rooms each one designed to bring a little bit of space down to earth. They dive into hands-on activities, exploring the science behind space travel, building models, and even testing out their own space-related experiments. Through these activities, the students not only learn about space, but they also discover how their own creativity and curiosity can take them to new heights, just like the astronauts that they connected with. For these kids at Kwajalein High School, the sky is never the limit. It's just the beginning. Yo, quick greetings from Quadrant High School in the Marshall Islands. We are honored and excited to participate in this NASA in-flight education downlink as a part of Expedition 72. Our school is located on Kwajalein Atoll, a unique and beautiful place in the Pacific Ocean. I am Megan Hensley. And I'm Jai Corder here on Kwajalein. We're inspired by the vast skies and endless possibilities of space exploration. This opportunity reminds us that no matter how remote we may feel, we are all connected through science, discovery, and innovation. Thank you, NASA, for inspiring students like us around the world. We are thrilled to learn from the astronauts aboard the International Space Station and can't wait to ask our questions. Como tada, and thank you for this incredible experience. What do you miss on Earth other than your family? Yeah, so I, I first want to say it's awesome to be able to speak with you today. I look forward to answering all your questions uh, and sharing a little bit about what it's like to live and work in outer space. So, so what do I miss? Uh, it, other than family. Uh, absolutely, I miss my family. But the other thing that I think I miss is weather. So inside the space station, it's always 70 degrees, about 70 degrees, and, and it's always not really humid and it's controlled. But I miss wind, I miss rain, I miss the feeling of water uh, hitting my skin and actually moving because here, here in space, water floats and, and and so here, let me just show you. It's easier to, to just show you rather than to, to just, you know, to try to describe what you're seeing. But water just floats up here. And, and that's why we're here. We're doing experiments because we can take gravity out of the equation, just like I've done with this water right here. And so this water floats. And if it gets on my skin, it just goes all over. It, it doesn't move. And it slowly becomes my the temperature of my body and then it's almost like it's not even there and so I've missed the feeling of cold rain falling on my skin and running across my skin rather than water just kind of floating but it's mesmerizing up here this is the amazing reason this is the reason we're in space on the International Space Station doing science awesome question what has been your biggest challenge that you've had to overcome in order to become an astronaut? Yeah, I th that's a great question. And, you know, it's, it's hard to think about what's the biggest challenge. Nick hit the uh, nail on the head about teamwork, right? So I think um, just working with teams takes away some of that challenge. If you feel like you can trust your teammates, um, that's, that makes everything easy because things are difficult up here, just like he was talking about the water. So I think challenges like you mentioned earlier being away from home being away from things you're familiar with you guys living on an island you sort of understand what we're talking about but you have that camaraderie that makes those really challenging times of missing family missing friends missing things that are normal in, in the united states palatable and easy because you have friends that you can work with so this process for the NASA Downlink event started in April of 2024. Colonel Morgan had given Dr. Gerber and I the application and we went through a rigorous application process uh, in April and May of 2024. And then 
like I said, this process is nine months in the making. It's nine months we've been working on this. We had a little bit of time where we were waiting to see if we got accepted um, until September. When we did get that notification, we really on the ground began planning here with the whole Kwajalein school system, especially with the administrators, with Dr. Gerber, Dr. Blakey, and Mr. Gertzma, and especially Dr. Dr. Gerber really getting us off the jump with that application and doing all of the education parts of it. And then the planning here, along with all of our mission partners, we partnered with Colonel Morgan, of course, and his connection with Colonel, Colonel Haig. Um, but then we also partnered with RTS and RG Next, MIT specifically here do today doing some of the rotations for our students. And then also the team that helped us do the tour of the GBR, the ground-based radar here on Kwajalein. Excellent opportunities for our students to involve themselves in space, but also in different STEM activities and STEM programs. So really a thank you to all of the KSS administration and the teachers for what they were doing in the classrooms and all of our mission partners here on Kwajalein. We really hoped that, if nothing else, the students would walk, walk out of today just inspired. That they would see there are people doing amazing things in this world that are making a difference. And someday that could be them. One day they might be one of the kids, one of the people on the International Space Station who are downlinking with the next generation of astronauts. And for a lot of these kids, the future is going to be different for them. There's going to be opportunities to do things that we might not have considered before. We just want them to be inspired, to, to believe that they could accomplish something really unique and really special. I really hope one of these kids, one day, would go on to become an astronaut, would go to space, that they might point back to today and say, I went a certain direction in my life because I was inspired by this unique opportunity. All right, Sonny, Nick, the entire Quadrillon school system and community, thank you. On the count of three, two, one. Thank you! All right. All right, how's everybody doing tonight? Good? Uh, hey, this is, uh, this is probably the biggest crowd we've had in one of these yet, so it's exciting to see all the faces coming in, and we appreciate it. Um, you know, as, as everything, this is a, a community, a family. We have friends, we have loved ones. People have grown up here all their lives. We've got grandchildren that have grown up here. Um, it's a huge community, and we can't do this without each other. And so this is part of it, right, to come in, to, to, to hear your voice, us be able to give you information and continue to try to improve quality of life and and just the overall programs here on Quad. Look, uh, I'm starting with the housing projects, which we all see great progress on. Blair? Uh, thank you, sir. I appreciate everybody coming out tonight. So uh, like Colonel Morgan said, he asked me to get an update on the housing. Um, it's all going really well. But it's, it's the biggest thing to take away. So we have awarded three of the five phases of housing so far. Um, phase one is the one that you can see that uh, the dogs that are being built right now. Uh, phase two and phase three are uh, cast in place concrete. And then phase three is CME block homes. Um, we're looking at a, a, we're still tracking a completion date for phase one of uh, September of this year. Good evening, everyone. So uh, I, I know a lot of folks have uh, wondered what's going on with the food and why uh, the shell said surf wire and kind of mayor of total um, Hopefully you're in the same now that there's product on the, on the shelves again and uh, we're able to offer your uh, better selection once again. So. Uh, uh, towards the end of last year, in November, uh, we did uh, start to deal with a pest infestation, um, story, pro uh, story product pest infestation. Uh, we had confused flower beetles. Panel. Uh, I just wanted to uh, inform the community as best as I can uh, what to do if you find any pests in your home. Uh, the immediate action is to identify what the product is and throw it away. Um, take it out of your house or just throw it in the trash can in your kitchen. Uh, that'll reduce the risk of that product, um, or the, the pests that are in that product going to a, going into another product. Uh, if you'd like, you can bring the uh, product back. Good evening, everybody. Um, so 
wanted to give a quick update that uh, as Commander mentioned with regards to where we are with Cold Breeze. Um, as you all know, this initiative was uh, placed back uh, it was, it was in 2024 to help expedite the repairs to you know, the HVACs across the, the island. And uh, last quarter, um, you know, we've had uh, strengthening our, our footprint uh, with regards to resources. So, that... well, hello, everybody. Uh, I'm Norman Means. I'm the new chief medical officer, and I see a lot of familiar faces out there. So, uh, I know a lot of people that uh, I hope to meet soon. Um, so, we have about 100, and, well, not about, we have 166 domestic uh, animals on the uh, in the installation. Our veterinary services are there to take care of all of these animals. Uh, additionally, we have a population that we don't know exactly how many are, but we all see them every day, and those are our, our favorite little collage cats. Uh, this is Kevin Robinson here, MWR Supervisor. Uh, guys, we got inner two wire polo going on and basketball season happening at the exact same time. Basketball games are being played right now as we speak. Um, every third Wednesday, we have billions tournaments for eight ball and nine ball. Every fourth Thursday, we have miscellaneous game nights, things like that of that nature. If you like to do things like that over at the ARC. ARC is an unmanned facility, but uh, you can always go there every single day. There's a cipher lock on the door. Uh, we strive to be here to help you guys. Build the CSM and I we're, are going to stick around up here because I know everybody wants their spirit stick. And um, we're happy to answer any questions that you have up here. But again, once again, I'll reiterate, Grand Sergeant Major Miller and I are honored to serve this community and we are, are committed to the transition ahead of us in the next six months and we appreciate you all and team quadge